Alrighty. Uh, oh. Alright, what's up everybody? Good evening. Alright, just tagging everybody really quick guys and we'll go ahead and get started. That is a lot of red, I agree. What's up, everybody there on TikTok? Uh, so uh, today we didn't really make money. Uh, I did, or both. We did. We actually made money in the small account, which I'm primarily focused in. Uh, I did not trade uh, much at all in my in my in account, so uh, not really. Kind of taking a break from it, if if you want to think about it that way. So um, just strictly trying to focus on one thing at the moment. So. Um, Uh, this might be more of a correction than a crash. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far, but all right. So, what's up, finesse? Uh, BBIG, I see that short. Uh, everything you'll make money, of course. Troy, I've been, I'm a, I'm a bear at heart. So, um, what's up? Hold on one second. Um, that's a weird thing to ask somebody. What's up, Soflo? <clears throat> All right, guys. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just get straight to it. Uh, if you guys have shared it or shared uh, the YouTube stream, um, feel free to do so if you know anybody who wants to tune in. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get started um, with some of the top news. And uh, we will recap um, a few of the things that happened today. We had some really awesome moves to the downside. A lot of these price predictions that we've been giving you guys um, as far as potential new lows um, seemingly uh, coming into uh, fruition. So uh no not not in a meeting right now uh what a green day uh we had a pretty good day um i was really happy with today so for for being for being red we were green so Oh yeah. All right. So, um, did it jump with Activision falling back through the gap? Yeah, Ray Ray, we actually shorted that gap here today. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get started with our news. Um, uh, gosh, what a what a day. So right off the bat, guys, we had the S and P down one point eight percent, Nasdaq Nasdaq uh, point uh, two point six percent, the Russell three point six percent down, the Dow Jones one point fifty one percent as well. So we saw all major indexes uh, moving to the downside. Um, so uh, <laughs> kind of crazy because. Um, major supports major resistances uh excuse me major emas um all coming into play now as we're uh kind of um set up with a lot of there's a lot of bearish setups uh apple um the s p itself uh has a pretty bearish setup so um i'm just tagging everybody here should you short dwac i think it's inevitable that it's gonna uh pull back so yes uh dwac of course ripped 21.77 percent HMHC, 9.7%, uh, MYNZ, 279 amongst the top movers. We also have the 10-year Treasury yield hit its highest level um, since January 2020. Um, energy was the only sector 
um, to close positive as U.S. oil hit its highest price since October of 2019. Goldman Sachs got wrecked on earnings. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Activision stock blasted 25.9% to four-month highs after Microsoft acquired the business for $68.7 billion. And we're going to talk about that more here in just a minute, uh, or actually right now. So uh, Microsoft has reportedly agreed to take out gaming giant Activision Blizzard in a $68.7 billion all-cash deal marketing Microsoft's costliest acquisition in history, perhaps its most important in history. The proposed deal will see Microsoft pay $95 a share, a 45% premium to the company's stock price as it's traded before the announcement. The acquisition comes after months of turmoil at ATBI and the July 2020 um are in July 2021, uh, the troubles highlighted in Activision um, Blizzard and allegations that the company condoned frat boy culture. Uh, some boy months later in 20, September 2020, 2021, we reported Activision Blizzard's ongoing legal battles with state and federal regulators. Um, so Microsoft, after all, Microsoft um, has spent the last year's uh, stacking up gaming properties to build its foundation in the industry-leading Xbox Game Pass, the Microsoft acquisition of Zenimax Media, the owner of Bethesda last year. Xbox grew its game, grew its game studio uh, footprint to 23, uh, putting Microsoft in a fundamentally different ballpark than its competitors. Um, so uh, Microsoft also in the second biggest company in the world just hours before today, Steel ran off the presses. U.S. Uh, FTC uh, and Department of Justice DOJ indicated the desire to rewrite merger rules to prevent larger mergers like this one. Uh, naturally, investors are, aren't are fully convinced this deal will go through. ATVI rose 26% to 82 at 31 today, which is uh, below Microsoft's $95 um, share offering. And we talked about that today uh, as we traded ATVI. And that is one of the trades that we actually took to the downside. We ended up taking that ATVI short for, uh, some of you guys got out for 60, 70%. Um, I got out for about 50%. Um, Yeah. Um so uh we'll take your guys' chart request. Uh just give me just a second here, guys. We're gonna go ahead and get through this news and stuff. Um so anyway, um besides that, that was the major news with ATVI. Um and of course that made for a really good downside trade today off that gap up. Uh, so another big highlight going into this week after weeks of controversy leading to the deployment of 5G technology around airports, major telecom companies expected to launch an upgraded version of 5G nationwide tomorrow. Uh, wireless carriers such as AT&T and Verizon have already punted the rollout of 5G C-band service in sympathy of regulators who are concerned the new service might interfere with aircraft equipment after being asked at the last minute by regulators to punt their launch and the carrier agreed to impose a buffer around most major airports but they're not happy about it at all however boating has boeing has reportedly advised some international airlines not to operate the 777 in the u.s <laughs> in light of a 5g deployment uh consequently mrates japan air indian air uh, and ANA will reportedly suspend flights to nine cities, and the cancellations will only affect a handful of flights. So, whoo, that's a lot. Uh, so we, I mean, we've got, uh, oh God, we saw a crypto exchange, crypto.com get hacked, leaving users with uh, missing Ethereum, a total loss reported of around 15 million. I uh, could go into that for about an hour, but, um, so anyway, um, we also saw Big Bang's XLF uh, falling about 2.3% today. Finally, oh my God, guys. Finally, after after days of trying to get this gap, days, Manny, of trying to get this gap filled on Bank of America, we finally filled that stupid gap 
and uh, XLF uh, cruised to the downside. But um, Goldman Sachs tumbled uh, seven months to six months low after the bank fell short of earning expectations. Um, so we also have uh, Bank of America, uh, Bank of America, um, coming tomorrow uh, at the bell, which we have set up a trade on. So we'll see what happens uh, if we get Lambo tomorrow. So we're Lambo. Um, <clears throat> Well, that is, um, let's see here. Oh my God, Peloton could lay up to 41% of its sales and marketing staff off. Um, Business Insider reported leaked audio from the company's executives was commented on the, commented on the layoffs and dire state of some of the Peloton's stores locations. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So that's about it, guys. Uh, I'm going to cap the news right there, or this is just going to be a news. Uh, <laughs> that's it. So, um, what? Oh, sorry. I was reading that. Such a disappointment. Yeah, I'll do the virtual. I couldn't, I couldn't do all. You know what I need? Um, is I need you guys in um, the VR. One person needs to read the comments from uh, YouTube, another person needs to read them from Discord, and another one from TikTok. If we could do that, then then uh, Mighty Power Rangers Unite will, will be able to do it. But yeah, no, I can't uh, can't multitask all four streams. BBIG, oh my God, all right. So let's do BBIG. The people want BBIG. Um, we're gonna chart BBIG. Good God. All right, here we go. So uh, we know Sneeze in this, so uh, we have to buy, uh, by law, I feel like go over this place. Huh? Yeah, no. Uh, I'm going to give it to you guys straight, always. Um, so, from right off the bat, daily candle, not bad. Um, high volume, kind of similar to the volume that we have seen before, coming off of these really, really strong moves. I will give you the gap. Uh, 588, 598, maybe six dollars. I think you are highly likely, uh, I think it's likely to hit that six dollar mark, and then after that, uh, you can you can catch me outside. Um, how about that? So, um, I would not be in it after that. I will say that on the 15 minute, you're gonna need to be up if you're gonna trade this thing in equity in pre market. Um, hopefully you have a broker that will allow you to trade that. It did close the day with a 15 minute pin it, which is a fun thing to say. Um, and, uh, so you do have a gap to the downside now. So bears, uh, have a choice. Do they want to take it to six or do they want to take the gap nearest to them? So hopefully you move it up in pre-market and make your way to the upside there. So, um, yeah, you guys should be able to hear me, right? I think. I think everybody can hear me. Um, I have six dollars, but I don't know what the plan is for BBIG. Um, so, um, you guys uh, have questions? It's okay if you don't. If you guys just want to drop uh, whatever charts that you're looking at um, or requests that you have, uh, let me know. If you have a chart that you're you just set up or whatever, um, let me know. Um, B BI is going to hit the two. Wait, no, not BBI. I don't know anything about that. Um, Bank of America has earnings tomorrow, my guy. So there's not much that I can do about that one except for read and react. I wouldn't even chart it right now. Whenever you get uh, come on this live, I get Cloverfield, uh, Cloverfield vibes. Can you explain what that means, Manny? Where did Manny go? No, what what is what does Cloverfield mean? What is that? What? Yeah, someone said they get Cloverfield vibes from my YouTube or from my uh I don't even know. Um <clears throat> uh head and shoulders on Apple. So yes. Uh, I will give you that. It does have the apparent head and shoulders. The right shoulder is a little bit weak, um, you know, uh, and I did also um, remind you guys that the left shoulder is uh, 
a lot higher. Uh, that mark is a lot higher than um, uh, your shoulder would normally be, which is one reason why I said that we could end up tomorrow gapping down. If we gap down to 168.23, we're going to bounce. That's it. Uh, I would like to have a small gap up, and then that would likely lead us for the gap fill to the down. <laughs> Jeez, what's happening here? Um, but yes, it does have that vibe. It does have the neckline, uh, 168.44, um, and then the gap fill below it, 165.88, another gap opening up at 165.12 um, right there, and then closing right, uh, or closing at 162. So I, I personally do see it as a short opportunity, um, and, and a good cap side play to the downside. So. Manny, do you have anything to add on that one? Or um, I mean, I think this the Apple so far, as long as um, I do expect a, uh, a test of a downtrend um, from the lower time frame. So um, I think that bears could end up getting clapped, um, and there is still the possibility uh, that this is um, um, there's still a possibility to retest this downtrend before actually making a new low. So, yeah, I mean, Apple looks like kind of a stable. Those two are good support versus 170. So now we just got to get rid of these, you know, whoever's going to keep the stock up. But, um, up on the thing that I'll just add to Apple is you got to keep it right on spy runs. And even though the monthly on the NASDAQ is getting less, and the um, spies monthly is now coming into rising support. So, you know, it's 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 just one of those trades that you just got to be careful. And you, you can't be too biased on it. You know, you have to adhere to your stop loss, not the stop loss that, no, but this is going to dump it. So it's, you know, it's not a stop loss. That's yep. what you're so thinking. Yep, exactly. As long as you're ready to your manager your risk, obviously it looks short. It looks yeah, it looks great. You have uh, a couple of different key targets. You've got the one uh, sixty eight um, forty mark. You've got the low of one sixty seven seventy five, um, and then you've got the gap fill to one sixty six sixty five, um, and then you've got another gap underneath that as well. So there's there's a multitude of targets to the downside, and then I mean the overall setup on the daily uh, is giving off a bit of the same vibe here. Uh, that that full head and shoulders type vibe, but again, um, we don't want to be too sure of ourselves. We want to make sure that we're doing proper analysis here. So this does seem to be the fourth trip to support. So we'll see what happens. Fifty day EMA broken. Um, I I have a feeling we're going to see some gaps get filled, and one sixty five forty is the mark. So, um, yeah, the heat map literally is glowing on my screen on TikTok. It's so red. Um, it's amazing. I love it. Um. <laughs> uh so anyway um a lot of trades going on. yeah um i keep seeing what was that one uh d d o g and then i know somebody asked for lucid head and shoulders which i can confirm um we you know that rejection off that gap fill for lucid man i i kind of wish it would have just held a short on that um lucid i think personally i i wouldn't be long on that company um until they have something real <laughs> like uh have being being the car of the year is just a trophy which you cannot sell uh you know you could but that's probably not going to show up on the profit margin um but anyway uh i personally see lucid back down to 36 dollars uh just simply on the daily i haven't even seen i know that there's a quote unquote head and shoulders on the hourly, but that's already broke. So the hourly time frame is only going to give you so much of a move. And you do have a gap to the upside. So don't get too eager on this one. It's super wicky. Uh but yes, it does appear to have more of a rounded top, I would argue. Um I, but uh regardless, yeah, I do see this one continuing to the downside. Uh the site uh the heat map here is on um trade station or trading view. You bought loose and you just bought CCIB, you're good. You don't have to worry about it. You know, you're, you're, you're an energy investor, but you, you know, bought loose and it became loose and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, so that's a whole different story for sure. So, um, 
Uh, somebody asked me about Pat, and um, you know, I'm gonna give you my my honest feedback on this one. Um, you know, Cat hit two thirty today, um, two thirty fifty. Yeah, um, but not at. Well, it also took a, a giant dump. Um, fifteen minute time frame. Um, as you guys can see, um, from my chart here, there is. Let's see. There we go. Okay, sorry. Uh, it is not uh, a wonderful stock to trade unless you are long and you caught the dip. So if you were down here and you, you caught the dip um, or caught it during a consolidation phase, like, that's awesome. Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, is the price section on cat can be kind of trippy. Uh, I have a 15 minute rising wedge here. So I'm thinking that we're going to find ourselves down to 225.80 uh, or even just a retest of that 226 level. Uh, the daily does look like it still wants to give you some more upside. So I think it just might be a retest you might have, uh, but it's making a whole lot of effort and may, not making or uh, gaining a whole lot of ground um and that kind of to me shows weakness so um how many likes do i want oh uh, all of them um i'm no, just kidding uh thank you thank you for those of you guys leaving a gap uh or leaving a gap uh leaving likes um i am uh live on youtube the link is in my bio there if you guys want to leave a question um i will look at the them uh look at them there uh, the next one is going to be Disney after Datadog. So Datadog, um, sheesh, I haven't traded this one in a long time. That one has a gap. So um, uh, a gap scanner was pointed out to me, guys, um, that points out gaps for you. Um, so those of you guys are new, uh, I want you guys to go to your indicators. Uh, shout out to Kenneth. Um, but uh, good job um sort of sorted again um but uh you go to gap um gap detector and uh you'll find that one it's the top download it's uh by a s c h um and it does actually show gaps pretty well uh i was pretty pleased with it so all that being said uh you have a main target i think and i'm not sure exactly when your earnings are here for datadog but um you do have a gap way way below you um that being said i think that it might be in i mean you got your bounce you saw a considerable bounce um but uh with datadog here i would look for a retest of around the 133.50 level uh daily time frame um you made a hammer candle inverted hammer you might end up just you might just Oh wow! So those fifteen-minute average on this is the easiest candle I'm speaking of. Uh, Data Dog looks like it's going to gap down on you, to be honest with you. But I'd be aiming for this gap one twenty-two thirty-five to one sixteen eighty-three. So it's called gap detector. Um. So Disney. Um. Super interesting chart here. Such a piece of crap. Um, so Disney, yeah, yeah seriously. Uh, so Disney just pretty much just stayed in range from dumping yesterday. You popped back up and you hit a resistance. I think you might end up seeing some chopping up to 153.50. I want to see it take this gap, but the spy needs to move up. We need to see the market uh, rebound and hopefully on earning sentiment or whatever the case may be. But Walt uh, Disney right now is having some serious trouble maintaining these levels. Um, so you got that gap. If you take that gap, I'll take it. Is it like look at look at the when I posted? It looks really nice. It looks like it's just a bouncing trend. It's a bear flag, obviously. So it didn't go all the way. But if it goes through the gap fill, I, I think I'll be an next week. So it could be something good for the bottom. I'll smoke that with you. What? Your gap challenge. That gap, look at it. Oh, to the upside? Yeah. Yeah, so I like that gap, and I think you might actually, you know, I don't know how futures are moving now, but I think you might actually, um, 
Well, I think it'll gap down and it'll give us a decent entry. But yeah, there is a gap to the upside um, to fill and a resistance to hit. So I, I think I like Disney for the gap fill um, at the moment. Oh. Looking at Visa, how far out? Um, where at? Oh, how far out do you look for gaps to fill? Um, usually I want them with like somewhat within range. You know, if like there's a bearish pattern on the daily time frame, and I see one at a support that's you know like for Visa here, if we, there was a major gap here to like one eighty three or something, then you know I would take something out till like March, um, if I saw a, you know bearish signal. So signals, Nvidia. Yeah, big stepper. Um, if if Manny and I and Big Stepper all trade Disney, things gonna get waxed. Um, yeah. So so with this one, man. Um, I mean, you know, below two thirteen fourteen, uh, and two eleven thirty three. I would suspect you're likely gonna go fill this gap to two o four sixteen on Visa. So starting to show signs of rejection. All right, what's next, guys? You guys have another request? Any questions? Uh, looks like we've got NVIDIA is the next one. So, ah, man, this one might end up seeing some... I... How's the daily look to you on the video? Let's see. All right, so you did bounce at support today, 258. Um, yeah, if, uh, okay, so if you're trying to trade this, I would at least be a month out. Yeah, if you're trying to get that gap to the downside, I'd be at least a month out. I was giving it, like, I was talking about like way down there, but, but yeah. You could go to something shorter and just scale in, but that's up to you. What time frame do I look for gaps? Hourly and daily. Probably up top. Um, anyway, NVIDIA um, has a gap to the upside, guys. Uh, I think it's worth considering playing to the upside. Um, I would watch key levels like 260 and 260, 225 to the upside. Uh, 263.15 um, as signs of a, a potential reversal on NVIDIA and potential chance for a gap fill to 267.55. So, there's a comment here. Uh, you're fine. Um, are you giving it a month? So I would give it, it's, it's just for insurance. Um, it's so that you don't have to constantly be watching it on the five minute, uh, because it is far enough away where it's not going to be a straight line and you need to be watching how 15 minute can, candles close and stuff like that. So. 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't think we're gonna get damage over here. You don't? No, I think we're gonna really big support for the like we here's the thing, if we get up down, I'm gonna actually be even more bullish into tomorrow. Yeah, we got down bullish all day. Yeah, because I like guess it's, it's you know, setting is like I said, setting is nice, but we always need that sort of relief, you know, involved. And today it was a very, very hard drop. I mean the dial closed what? Down six hundred points, right? Mm -hmm. More or less. Yep. So it's it's just it's gonna be one of those sessions. Like we wanna have me on the bone that we can grab. You know, we got down now almost to about a funnel ring, so we don't fight. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Holy shit. Damn, that's expensive as fuck, dude. I was looking at a 360 camera. It's only $5,450. Oh, like the GoPro one? Uh, it's called Insta360 Pro 2. There's other ones that are 800 bucks and shit like that, but no, that shit's crazy. Um, one that I see is Tesla. I don't know. You want to... I got to go grab some water really quick, but do you want to run down on Tesla? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What is it? Yeah, go ahead. I got you. Okay. All right. So test it, test it, test it. I mean, the windy looks great. We're hanging below the five and the ten day SMA. That's cool. Uh, one forty one. Uh, on the daily, we are pretty much rejecting the 50 EMA, which is only nice to see whenever we want to take it into you know, the downtime of the day. So, when it really comes to Tesla, uh, one thing about it. So, today at the open, uh, and I, I want you guys to understand one thing. Uh, session tape doesn't mean that the next session is going to have the same amount of tape. You know, it doesn't mean the next session is going to be that bigger right there at the lows and whatnot. But let me explain why there was a bidder at the nose today and why Tesla did what it did. So anytime you look back, when Tesla gaps down and you know the market just bounces and, and fills those gaps, Tesla's always the leading aggressive gap finger. There's never a time that that gap is never super, super aggressive. Oh, you can't hear me, sorry. It's a little my laptop. So when it comes to, you know, like uh, gap downs like this, Take advantage of them and try not to, you know, get biased and say, oh, no, this is the fun, because you're going to get met by a pretty aggressive bidder. So I saw today at the open near uh, 1020, as we the bar open and we dropped down, there was a guy sitting there with about 100,000 shares. You know, I, I say a guy, but obviously I'm just speaking of court. He could have been an institution or whatever you want to call it. So he was sitting there, and I saw those orders get filled. I saw on my uh, level, my tens of sales that showed me over a thousand orders. It printed big, so that was a that person got filled. And then as soon as that happened, just Tesla started whip sawing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it finally took off. The contracts went from literally, and I kid you not, two hundred and twenty dollars, which is what what I was bidding. I just didn't get filled. The the bid just never got below my my uh, two twenty. About and the bid would have dropped to two nineteen. I would have gotten for this and leave the seat while you're sitting. From, from that amount to like That's over $700. It was a crazy, crazy trade. But um, it's just moving forward. I want you to understand that Tesla got down. It's like a nice $30 or $40 gap, whatever you want to call it. Trading. Don't be scared of trading. Just use proper targets. You know, take the gap fill. Take profits into the gap. You know, trim your exposure as you go up. And that's it. As long as you remember that, you're going to easily make money on Tesla. Tesla's one of the easiest stocks to trade. No. But people are intimidated by it because, you know, ah, I'm just impressed. And, ah, yeah, I mean, so does fucking Amazon and so does. It's a nice day trading stock. So coming down to it, it's going to really be uh, the short and long side. If we see the long side, I'm not gonna call it till I see Tesla clear and confirm levels like 10 at 1060 more or less. I want to see it, you know, get above that, and then if it drops down a little bit, I want to see those levels get held. I will definitely be a bit buyer there to potentially take this thing higher. Okay. Uh, if I'm looking at the short side, easily below today's days, we have a nice, nice room to fall. Real quick, um, it's, it's very large, so it's really gonna depend on that. I think Tesla, you know, it's it's really trading with the market. It doesn't have any individual news to cause it to deviate. 
it's an aggressive data, so just take it as it is. If it gives you a setup, take it. But if you get those gaps, whether they're up or down on Tesla, they're very, very good trades to take. Yeah. Hey, um, just just two seconds. I, I got a discipline, so shit. Uh, hey, Chatian, for, uh, first of all, um, excuse my language, everybody, but shut your fucking mouth. Um, don't tell anybody who's talking, uh, guest or admin <clears throat> to stop talking. Um, and then turn around and ask to do, um, your request. Yeah, I appreciate your apology. But in the future, you need to talk to us like our human beings, not Ooh. robots, all right? We're if you don't like his analysis, then I mean, suck it up because I love it. I fucking love it. I love it. I, I wake up. You guys know what I listen to when I wake up? Manny's analysis. That's what I listen to. Is it, um, Tesla is one of my highest PL here today. I trained this stock very good. I was about to say, that's why I turned it over to you, dude. <laughs> And I will never be scared to be wrong. If I'm wrong, I just don't take the trade. I'm good like, for the other two, three stocks that I'm watching, you know. All good, dude. I appreciate your apology, but uh please uh yeah, just keep it under wraps next time. Um yeah, I uh, agree wholeheartedly, man. Um great analysis, dude. Yeah, te I was gonna say you wanna make money on Tesla, listen to Manny, so um I, I have never seen someone ab I I've never seen anybody abuse a stock um with so much style. When I do it it's like a drunken trailer fight with Roblox, you know. Um we get it we get it done but the shit's shit's crazy sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, the funny thing Yeah, that's really funny Ewa. Uh that's such a cool uh bio pick. Um all right, so anybody in the Discord, you guys you guys were talking about Facebook. Um so I, I saw some goobers talking about uh a head and shoulders um on on Facebook, which dude, I there is none, so don't try and look for one. There was no This this one's not there, dude. It's not so we this there's too many everything is a higher a lower high. So where we see that spike up there, people when people see a spike and then they see another bump, they will literally mischaracterize any shoulder look as that shoulder. But a characteristic head and shoulders is going like this pop right here at 338.50 would have continued into some sort of rounded top something. You know what pattern does play out here? The double top on Facebook at 354.43. That's the pattern I'd be paying attention to. Um, so that and and all that being said, um, I, I see Facebook, huh? Oh, oh, 353, 354, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, dyslexia. Yeah, that was a crazy short, dude. Just that gravestone that it made on December 28th, that was the perfect short. I think I even said that. I was like, it's so Phoenix. Oh, bro, Nadim. Nadim took it short. You don't remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, he swung puts off the gravestone and then that thing just flushed for I know, dude. Nadim, Nadim, Nadim has transcended. Dude, like, the stocks pay. For Nadim's family, I was gonna say it used to be Nadim asking for his family, but now it's the stocks asking for theirs. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys were asking about uh Sophie. I guess there's news on it. I see a big green dingus in after hours, so let's look at it. Um you know, um, not, not to get, I mean, this is not um, politics or anything. This is actually market moving. We are moving. Russia, Russia panned out its embassy in Ukraine. Yeah, they evacuated that thing, dude. And they, bro, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, like, I don't even want to talk about it. If things start getting wild, I mean, at this day and age, just spread the market, whatever happens. 
Uh, yeah, and you know what? <laughs> sure, you believe. Uh, I'm about to start digging into the backyard, bunker time, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, I should, but I, there's nothing left to do. But yo, oh, damn, dude. are you kidding me? Oh my god, dude! So you're getting more reviews than we got one. It is getting real, dude. You know what? They're just not talking about it, man. Uh, we've been at like DefCon three or something like that, which is like red alert <laughs> for like weeks. So like, meanwhile, the market's just like, hey, yeah, it's fine. Um, uh, no, 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 cool hand, Steve. I, I just, I was, so I was gonna ask. Uh, it's kind of late now. It's nine oh seven, but you know, I was gonna. Tonight, the first half was just going to be simply taking your guys' questions. Um, I wanted to make sure that I answered any recap questions or anything like that. So I didn't put a channel up, and now, you know, yes. So, pre-fact, perfect, yes. Uh, so I will give you the Sony, uh, <laughs> I give you the, so the Sophie Falling Wedge. <laughs> Uh, so you get a nice pop here. I'm looking at the angle, uh, coming off of the support does seem to coincide, uh, with Sophie's leg up. I like that the point of control is at a psychological number 15. So that's the mark I'm going to give you $15 with a target of 1575, 1650. And then there is, I think I saw a gap. Hold on a second. Um, negative Ghost Rider. There's none. Um, so uh, just wanted to make sure. Uh, the revolution is coming, and I'm using my stock earnings for ammo and guns. I wouldn't really call war with Russia a revolution, uh, but more uh, of a drag on human evolution. But um, <clears throat> why is my sh yeah right? Why is your top screen all red? Uh, the top screen is red uh, because that is your market and it has been gut punched today it got hit right in the shins uh all right so city group uh so i think bank of america and other stocks um bank stocks are going to decide the the future movement now i think it's important to look at xlf so xlf did go and fill uh, the entirety of its gap, but has more gaps to the downside. And due to the rejection that we saw here on um, on XLF, which I am speculating uh, there is a resistance forming there. Um, due to that rejection, I do and I do I do do uh, I do expect uh, XLF or or um, yeah XLF to to move into the thirty eight fifty range potentially. So. I have a hard time securing gains because I always think it will go higher. Do you have a good strategy? Yes, Tristan. That's a great question. I love that question. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, it all determined, uh, is dependent on strategy, but uh, the, the where it does not differ is you always have an entry. You always have an exit, meaning a target. Your target is usually based on key levels, previous levels of rejection, previous bounce levels um and so on and so forth um and obviously different strategies uh have different targets different requirements um and therefore different outcomes but at the end of the day it all centers around it having a setup before the trade and then your feelings you have to remind yourself that the feelings that you have about whether it goes farther I have seen Manny, you know what, I'll give Manny like this as uh, for, for as many people, uh, Manny will take the FOMO to the chin and laugh it off, right? It may yeah. hurt, but like Manny has, I have watched Manny stick to his plan, regardless of what I say. I'll say, oh no, dude, I think this thing's going to go to the moon. And he's like, great, I just take profit. Okay, have a great day, guys. I got to go, I got to go fix this guy's fucked up AC job. Uh, so... So, you know, like Manny will will 
do what is done needs to be done and then leave the trade and come back later and see yeah the contract that he bought for 180 that he sold for 230 or 260 you know he had a heavy size is now at 600 it is what it is you have a trade setup you adhere to it you replicate it you do it time after time if you change it you have just now in uh basically almost like assassinated your account from the future um, because now your trading plan is whack and it's only going to continue you're you're only going to continue to change things uh instead of sticking to your core so um if you take those type of risk outside of it it needs to be in some type of place that isn't uh within your risk so um you know, enabling compound interest, I think this would be fine. very good. So, I know there's people with smaller, so like, you know, Gary, you know what's funny? There's people that struggle with just getting a trade in profits when they're starting. And there's people yeah. that struggle to take profits when they're starting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's absolutely crazy to even like hear that. But if I can give you know, just an idea how they do this, if you're in profits and bro, you know, you're up like 100%, and this is like, you know, a hundred percent of your account. Set a, a stop loss in in profits of ten percent of your account. Worst case scenario, your unrealized gains, you lose them, and then it's gonna it's gonna suck because you're gonna get five percent of TP. But you can have at least a ten percent gain of your account, even if you do this every day, every day, and you win every day ten percent, you're gonna make some nice money. So if you know if you're those individuals that you could actually get in profits, but then you struggle to take them because you think they're gonna keep running, use that ten percent stop loss rule. If your account is a six hundred dollar account, excuse my dog. If your account is a six hundred dollar account, then you set a six hundred dollar stop loss. That's it. Sorry, sorry. Um. So one thing I want to bring up uh, today, guys, in the small account, we took a little. A um, little tiny trade to the downside. Here it said something to me a couple weeks ago. It says, help me a ton. Instead of going for a home run, take the base hits. I don't even remember saying that, but yes. <laughs> I agree with my past self. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, we, I mean, that, that I, I use different ways uh, metaphorically to, to uh, convey this to certain people. But um, no, I, I didn't stream the office today uh are in the office uh today um the vr thing's new so <laughs> i can't compromise on what i'm already doing and by integrating it in uh and i just couldn't do all i have three streams running right now so that's a lot um and i'm reading all of them um okay so Let's see. Um, oh, but what I was going to say, ATVI. Uh, this was a small account trade uh, that we took, and I believe we can actually go look at that um, trade. It wasn't a crazy, amazing trade at all. Uh, I mean, it was a good trade, regardless. I know you guys likely got out um, better than I did. What is going on over here? Oh, hold on one second. Why did I get logged out? Hold on one second. Um, I wanted to discuss this because this was a um, probably a great thing um, when it comes to greed. All right, so I can't um, I can't seem to find it, and I got logged out of Weevil on my browser somehow. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just recap it. Um, but anyway, we had a small account again. Good percentage gain, excellent percentage gain. Anybody would have loved that one. Um, and I will say kudos to some of the members in our chat for taking this one short. I watched the 15 minute, I took it short. And the main target, right, was now granted there's a massive gap fill, but my main target was $80. But I also split that in half and I looked at the main tar or a target to the downside at 8150 
in my small account, I noticed that I was kind of getting really jacked up about the, the, the trade itself. I was getting really excited um, about the fact that we had you know made 50, 60%. And at that bottom level where I knew that we had that psychological level 81.50, I took profit. And I knew, I know that ATVI is likely to give us more. I think it goes and gives us $80. And I guarantee you that somebody out there who heard me took that trade is still holding that trade. And if they took it off of my trade and they're holding and they don't know where they're going to cut or where they're going to re-enter or where they're going to take profit, they're not going to take profit when that opportunity comes. So if they're in right now and it drops to 80, they're going to re-compromise. And somebody just asked me, how do you determine um, or, or do you move your, is moving your stop loss a strategy? It's a strategy to lose money. It's a strategy to uh, compromise on your trading plan, but it is not a strategy that's going to help you um, ever. Um, now, there are situations, I'll be honest with you, there's a, this is, you know, real life. Uh, there are situations where you may look at the chart and you may have a lighter position. And if you can strategically reposition yourself in a way that is going to allow you to stay risk free or eliminates risk, then do it. All right. It's not a hard, cold, hard rule. Uh, I've had to do it, too. But no, it's not a good thing to practice um, all the time. Uh, Tristan, uh, equity is a little bit different. So, um, uh, William O'Neill always preached to eight to 10% stop loss when purchasing stocks. Um, I've had people mention, uh, say seven. So seven is one I've heard, I've heard, uh, that's entirely you know, up to you. So if you're DCA, then. um all right so let's see here it's 9 18 guys we have just a little bit of time left i'm going to answer some questions here for um so somebody asked me um how do i determine the point of control i don't um i don't like have to do work for that that is a indicator um you could if you wanted to but uh usually what i do um is let's say i'm day trading um and i am you know in an area of consolidation i will zoom into that area of consolidation using the uh visible range uh volume profile um on trading uh trading view and that actually will determine the point of control so so far looking at atvi uh i don't know if you guys just saw that there's two points of control and funny enough uh, the one that I see right now is currently 8150, um, and that's exactly where we bounced today uh, uh, after uh, making that large gap up to the upside. Um, and um, that's usually determined by the area of highest volume. So, um, Yo, I'm here, by the way, but uh, we literally can't even hear you talk for real. No, you're fine, dude. We're good. I'm just... I have about 10, 10 minutes left and then I got uh, a couple of other things I got to do. I, I, I got to I gotta get to bed, man. I have the work. I think I have insomnia or something. Dude. I've just been not, not sleeping again. <laughs> I don't know what it is about winter, dude. I'm notorious for like not sleeping during the winter. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, dude. It's, it's uh, Mercury's and Gatorade or something like that again. <laughs> Y'all gotta be listening to your girls more. <laughs> Turn off my Wi-Fi. You think that's what it is? I'm about to go camping. That's what I'm about to do. All right, so let's look at Citigroup. Um, this is a request. Uh, and uh, did I already? I did already do this one. I don't think I did. Um, so anyway, Citigroup uh, finished the day at support $65. Below $65, I see a key support $65.80 and then a level of $64.50. Now, if you get around there and you're still bearish, uh, I think this could play out as, as a double-ish top, but kind of gives that. It's still bearish regardless as a rejection. Um, 
Uh, I'll answer that in just a second. Um, but uh, anyway, it has a um, major rejection up at the top. Um, and, and in my opinion, with uh, the financial sector kind of pulling back, um, there is the possibility that you go for a gap fill 6360. So uh, dumping $500 in calls on Sophie. You're stealing that line. That's fine. Take magnesium or melatonin or a warm glass of milk. Ugh. Milk? Is that milk? Oh, God, dude. Warm milk? Oh, my God. Not the milk, dude. The warm. Why? You had to put the word warm in it. Ugh. <laughs> All right, look, boys. <laughs> Bro. Boiled cabbage. I do like milk steak. I'm not kidding. Um, boil cabbage and drink the water. Y'all be watching too many TikToks. Um, it's lettuce, <laughs> not cabbage. It might be both, but it's definitely not. I don't think it's cabbage. Uh, Blink, you said. Uh, no warm milk with chocolate. Bailey Irish cream. I'll do some Baileys. I had Baileys in a shoe. Um, Damn. I see. I work my. Yeah, those don't work anymore, buddy. Oh, I ever trail it. That's funny. Uh, uh, SoFlo, do you happen to have uh, an Oculus? Hmm. <laughs> do you? Go look at my latest video, dude. Uh, we're, we're going to be, I want to do some interviews, some podcast interviews in virtual reality. I think that's going to be one of the coolest things to do. So, all right. So I'm going to do everything, everything that you guys just recommended to help me go to sleep. I'm going to do all of them and, uh, I'll see you guys next week. All right. So, um, Pauline looks like, uh, do you, are you thinking rejection? uh here dude off of this uh point it's also at the point of control but it's just a major resistance level um and then look at the volume the lack of volume here on the volume profile you'll puke hell yeah They are building for a chargers for GM had a great run up today. Oh, I see. I saw, I see like, uh, they broke a major support and then rejected it. I guess it does have an hourly flag. So it did reject, uh, three weak candles here. Um, so, I mean, really, uh, the $26 level, I mean, that's going to be pivotal for you. So. Um, point of control is at 2650. So you got a lot ahead of you, but, uh, if you can get past these levels, you actually could initiate maybe a small, this is a heavy, the short volume on this one could be actually pretty, um, high. So, but, uh, I'm on YouTube right now. So if you guys want to check my ATV anal ATVI analysis, uh, you can go and watch the recap there. So, uh, puke and rally. That's funny. Um, All right, can I, um, I want to make sure that I didn't miss anybody. Um, surge on the NASDAQ, or is that a small cap or something? Um, HD, and then someone said Roblox. I, I got to leave that stock alone, guys. Like, seriously, I, I this is what I was saying. It's going to turn into one of those trailer fights, you know? Uh, Home Depot looks crazy, man. So Home Depot looks as if it has. Um, so just watch it uh, above that 368. Uh, I would say a good clean level 368.35. Um, midway through that gap, 370.73, that is going to be a resistance. And the next gap fill occurs at 372 um, to the upside. So there is the p potential um, on HD that you could see. Uh, a bounce and I mean what the fuck 
uh, they were just trading at 418 and just dropped to 361.84. So, um, mine is coming in this Monday. I'll set up the yo, so flow, set it up, dude, and uh, we'll we'll make it up. Well, or we'll uh, we'll figure it out. It's better than make it out. Thanks for everything you do, but Manny, but I'm out. Good night. Oh, of course, Brian. Have a great day, man. Good night, Brian. Good night, Brian. It's neat. How big is your family, dude? Jeez. Yo, know, sloppy joes are mad underrated and can be made with luxury. You ever had a wagyu sloppy joe, dude? I'm just, yeah, I'm just. <laughs> do do what? Somebody had to tell Snead that the market is more than Amazon. I don't think he sees anything else but Jeff Bezos, dude. Jeffrey Bezos. Dude, Bezos looks like Google. Bezos looks like a combination of all the children's villains from the last five Pixar films. Damn, Bitcoin looks crazy, man. You know what? Oh, shit. Yo, Mike. Yo, you know what looks like a good show? Oh shit, we got one guys. We caught I felt like I felt like I'm going bass fishing right now and I just caught a big mouth. All right. Dude, look at XPVE, dude. Oh, and I bet the premiums on this are net. Seriously? Right, downside? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm watching it today, but I did it tomorrow. Oh dude, I'm going full Jeffrey Bezos on this thing. What if you started an opioid line? Call him Jeffrey Be uh, Benzos. Um, 4635, gap bill 4585. Um, entry tomorrow, uh, 4685. But honestly, I kind of want to take it. I kind of want to take it even lower. Guys, this looks like it might go. Ah, I'm pretty sure that's going to fill its gap and give you even further to the downside. Yeah, Jeffrey Bezos is small. Thanks, Potter Sucks. Every time I listen to you guys, I pick up a little more, and it makes a little bit more sense. There you go, man. And I'm telling you guys, and I, I am working on a planner for trading right now. Like, w amongst the other million things that I'm doing, uh, I am making a trading planner. And the main thing is uh, to write down your questions. Even if you were to trade independently, there's still, uh, oh God, uh, there's still um, worth writing down, recapping. Um, and so that's one thing that you, you need to do um, for sure is uh, write down those questions because the best way to learn is during and in, in action. So, and I want to um, reiterate this again, if you're new and you're in any type of live stream, and you're not asking questions when you feel confused because you feel like I'm going to judge you or I feel you feel like you're annoying me. I've got two kids and my daughter probably said daddy 68 times. Big stepper, boot him. Manny, get him out of here. That's it. Um, uh, I do not get annoyed like with that type of stuff because I'm here for you guys to ask questions, but. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead uh, with Big Stepper's uh, drop there. We're we're gonna go ahead and uh, call it a night. Um, I cannot fucking believe that's his phone back, Carl. What the? That's not funny, dude. Uh, Dude, I asked questions specifically about Cloverfield. I have no idea what that is. And somebody said that this is giving them a Cloverfield vibe. All right, well, I'm looking. 
Cloverfield is a movie. Is that the one? <laughs> I'm gonna do this for you, dude. I'm just gonna. Yo! Yo! I deleted it. Alright, anyway, uh. This looks like some apocalyptic stuff, so thank you for that. Um. Uh, I would not be doing this in a post-apocalyptic scene. So, um, all right, y'all. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. It's 8, 930. Um, we will uh, continue this tomorrow morning. I'm going to go uh, get ready for bed. Uh, I'm going to go trade. No, you're good, Skin. Um, I, I, I wasn't able to catch you with this, but um, I will be on early tomorrow. Um, to, uh, tomorrow so if you guys uh, or if you want to ask me that question or, or remind me about your question tomorrow uh i do you know that i'm more than happy to go over that for you so um just let me know and and we'll we'll uh just yeah just let me know dude whenever you're on in the morning and if it's if we have time uh i'll go over that for you so um i'm sorry to catch you so late absolutely uh so this is recorded um, and I will be live in the morning, so, uh, for pre-market prep. Disconnect the 5G. You know what? Let's also, um, do, uh, 5G stocks. Uh, somebody, just throw them out there for me. 5G stocks. Um. Verizon, T-Mobile? What do you mean? Like, Ucom, I think, does 5G stuff. So, I, I, feeling that we're going to have issues dude between uh aviation and and uh 5g stuff so i'm going to be looking into it yeah at and i get all those ones but i was looking for more of like the there we go like in seago and stuff like that so all right anyway you guys have a wonderful evening i will catch you guys later um possibly in virtual reality who knows um but anyway uh you guys have a good night i'll talk to you later see you in the morning peace out All right, y'all. Good night, guys. What's up?